So next, let's take a look at the app pages. Um, so the first one is this main page here called app. And if we click on this and look at the structure of the elements, we can see there's a left column. And this is what has our navigation menu. Um, so we've got a div here that contains a grid list for company. And you may wonder, this, this is the um, profile. Let's go to the child page. So you can see this is the uh, profile pic or the icon, I guess, for the company. And then next to it is the company name. And um, you may wonder, you know, why use a grid list when it, there's really just one uh, row here? The reason is a grid list is a really easy way to load data from a collection in Builder. So um, we have, if we go under collections, we'll see there's a collection here for companies. And this would be all the companies that are using this um, SaaS app. So on the right here, if we look at this grid list for company and click on data, we'll see under the data tab, the collection list. And we can see this is set to pull from the collection for companies. It's gonna get all the fields. And we can see that there's a filter here um, to filter ID by the current page company ID. Um, and this is a page variable that is set um, when you log in. Um, it's set to the company that you're assigned to. Um, but we can see that this is limited to one uh, number of records to return is set to one. So this is only gonna return one record. There should only be one record in your uh, data collection that matches this company ID, but just in case there's more than one, you set it to one. But in Builder, this is all you have to do to now bind that data to this um, page, to this child page. So we've set that collection to get all the fields from that row in the company. And now when we go to that child page, this is our row page, company row, we can see that image has a data binding and it's set to a field from the company's collection called company icon. And the same with company name set to a field called company name. Uh, so it's a really easy way to just uh, bind data quickly like that. So we have the company name there. Um, underneath that, we have a section with our nav and we've got buttons for dashboard customers, tasks, and team members. You'll see here in the elements panel that each one of these has an action uh, on it, an event. And if you click on the event, uh, you'll see there's one for action open dashboard. Customers has one for open customers, tasks, and team members. And if we go into each of these actions, we'll see that we are um, deselecting the nav uh, for whichever one we clicked off of um, and basically reselecting the, uh, or, or deselecting the ones that we uh, don't want. And then we're basically selecting the nav for the one that we do want opening a page into a container. So really we're deciding which of these other pages that we'll be covering. We wanna open into this container on the right. And then um, we're adding a selected style class and um, there's a collapse menu. Uh, this is for, if you're on mobile, we wanna collapse, collapse the nav after you select um, your item. So uh, all of these nav buttons have a similar action that works that way. Deselect, select, load the data into the, the uh, section on the right, or I should say load the page into the section on the right. And then if we're on mobile, collapse the menu. So that's what those do. Um, we've got a secondary nav here that has an account section. And again, this is set up very similar to the company, but this is for your personal account. Um, it's got your profile pic and your name here, and that's a grid list um, row. And if we click on this, we can see that uh, the image is bound to uh, a field for the current user called profile picture. So same concept there, even though it's just one item, using that grid list makes it really easy to bind the data. And then underneath that is a sign out. 
this has its own action. So if we go to the events, we can see there's an action sign out and uh, this basically signs the user out and then on success, it opens the sign in page. So um, in addition to that, there's a light box on this page. You won't be able to see it in the studio, but anytime you are loading a page like the sign in or add a customer, add a task, customer detail, task detail, these will load into a light box on um, the live site. And so um, that's what this light box is for. Um, the light box is an element type that uh, you can drag in in Builder, but in this template, it's already in here for you. And um, if you look at the action on this light box, um, there's really two. There's one on the outer light box centered, and then there's one on the inner light box centered. The outer one, what we want to do is if you click outside of the light box, we want to hide it so it, it puts the light box away. So we have on click this action light box hide, which just set a couple of styles to hide it. Um, but then if you look at the light box inner, um, the click here is set to do nothing. This is literally an empty event that has no actions in it. Um, and the reason for that is we want to, um, we want when they click outside to, to hide the light box, when they click inside, we actually don't want the light box to do anything. We want it to just um, continue with whatever actions would normally happen when you click inside that. So if you click on a link, we want the link to open. Um, so this is just telling it to uh, telling the light box to ignore any clicks. Um, and then lastly, we have a system message up here. You'll see it up above the page. This is a little notification badge that drops down um, when there's a system message and certain things happen. Um, and we'll get into that in some of these later um, sections, you know, what triggers the system message. But you can see here there's a couple of actions for hide and show. And if you look at these, um, you can see that it basically uh, tells the system message to drop down. Uh, when we're hiding it, it drops, you know, goes up above 100 pixels. And when we're showing it, um, we can see that it'll actually drop it down um, to 50 pixels below the top of the page. Um, and then there's a timer, and it will go back up after two seconds on its own. So we'll use that for showing notification messages. So that's the structure of the main app page. Down below that, you'll see the dashboard. So this is the first sort of inner page that would be loaded in this right-hand section of the app. Um, and on this dashboard, you can see um, we've got you know a couple of widgets up top that show you stats for a number of active customers, tasks, and team members. And then, um, down below that, we've got tables for recent customers and recent tasks. So let's take a look at what actions are on this page. Um, there's one that's called cache all data. Now, what this flow does is it runs a set of set variable actions, and it's basically setting variables on this page for all customers, all tasks, all team members, um, active customers, and active tasks. And for each of these, it is pulling from a data collection. So for example, with all customers, it's going to set into this variable named all customers um, the results of this get all fields from the data collection. There's a filter, um, again, for company ID to make sure we're only pulling customers for the company that this user is logged in under. And then it's just saying store this as a JSON, JSON array in this all customers variable. But we've got all these variables that get set um, when the page loads so that we have this data ready to use. And then you'll see that under page binding, if you click on the page binding uh, flow, you'll see that uh, it first runs cache all data. Um, and this page binding gets run automatically when the page loads. It'll run cache all data, and then it runs these different actions to set the value 
um, that you see in these various fields. So for, for example, for active customers count, um, we can see this action is setting the count for, of customers on this page to this variable that we just looked at. So that's how each of these um, stats are getting set when the dashboard loads. And that's what's um, you know setting this data from the database. We also have these two grid lists at the bottom for recent customers and recent tasks. And on each of these, you can click to go to the child page and you'll see the child is a row for customers, which is under the customer section and the same for um, tasks under the task section. But again, this row, this grid list row is pulling from a collection so for customers, it's getting all fields. There's a filter um, to make sure that the customers aren't archived and it's setting it to um, max five because we want to load at most five recent customers and five recent tasks. So um, you can drill down through these a little bit further to see uh, more in detail how these are set up, but that's the general idea is we wanna load five uh, from each. We also on this dashboard page wanna give them the ability to add new customers and add new tasks. And so that's what these plus icons are for. Um, and you'll notice that on this plus icon for recent customers, there's an event uh, that's bound to this for action open new customer. And if you click on that, you can see it runs a flow on uh, this parent page called app, shows the light box first, and then in that light box, we're loading this customer add page into it. So this is what I was talking about earlier. We're gonna load that light box, and then this customer add page gets populated right into that. So we'll get into the customers um, section uh, a bit more in the next video but that is the um, overview of how the app and the dashboard are set up.